Okay, hello, Ling441. We are in the minivan today to talk about the uh, kind of outcome of Toby Lab number one. Uh, so for this, uh, I'm going to do what I normally do for the transcription exercises in both 341 and 441, which is to grab at random somebody's transcription for each of the items that I asked you to tra transcribe, and then we'll walk through it together, or <laughs> I'll walk through it by myself in this particular case, uh, kind of telling you what I see uh, that is right in the transcription and what is not so right in the transcription, and we'll try to come up with something that's kind of copacetic in the end. Uh, I'm going to turn off my internet here because I don't need it, uh, and I will get right into it. Um, so we did this in the order of the two Marianas first. So I've got um, this candidate transcription from whoever, and since I last started uh, doing these sort of review videos, Prot has changed once again and made the IPA fonts over here enormous. I have no idea why. It'd be kind of nice to be able to sort of toggle this off and on as needed, but oh well. Thank you, Paul and David, as usual. Um, yeah, let's start with this one. It's uh, Mariana Made the Marmalade. Mariana Made the Marmalade. And I have to say just right off the bat that there's a lot to like in this particular transcription. Um, like the word tier uh, has been done quite well. Mariana. Uh, and one of the things that's nice about it is that um, this person has put boundaries uh, Maybe. on either side of these words in the middle. Um, there's one missing here at the end though. It should line up with the uh, sort of breaks that we get on both the tones tier and the breaks tier here, uh, or the boundaries we get on those tiers so that Marmalade. Everything kind of lines up at the end. Um, I will say something, another thing that's funny about this new version of Prot, I don't know why, but uh, when I play it on this new computer of mine, um, and I play it, there's this little like kind of echo you get from the sound file. Mariana made the marmalade. Uh, right, uh, at the tail end. We'll just have to ignore that. Uh, but I will point out that this last little bit is actually the uh, release burst for the D in marmalade. Uh, it's not recorded that well. So, I mean, you can see the the sort of pitch track here a lot better than you can see sort of the uh, acoustic properties of the segments involved. But for that reason, I'm going to shift these breaks or boundaries over to that, to after that little release burst. And I will say, you know, you can move these things around however you need to. Um, usually it's easiest to kind of line them up if you just do them all at once though, uh, you know, put your cursor there and find where you want to like demarcate off the end of the utterance and then boom, 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 all the way down through the different tiers and then you're done. Uh, there's nothing else on the miscellaneous tier here for this transcription, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, and remember to do that, you highlight the boundary and then you go to boundary and say remove and then voila, it's gone. Uh, and now we just have marmalade. Marmalade? Marmalade? Right. So that looks good. Um, I'm going to add another little boundary here at the front for Mariana. Just kind of close that off. Sorry, I kind of made it disappear there. Uh, it's in that little spot on the far left. Um, and the way I, you know, I guess you could spell, spell Mariana with one N, whatever. Uh, the way I learned this uh, or got these, when I got these sound files, the Mariana was spelled with two N. So I'm sticking with that, I guess. That's my story. Uh, anyways, the rest of this is kind of the crucial part that I haven't talked about yet. Um, I'm totally fine with the numbers down here on the breaks tier, 1114. There's a four here at the end of the intonational phrase, the whole utterance. Uh, otherwise, we just have ones in between each word, right? Um, but the question is, what about these tones on the tone tier? Mariana made the marmalade. <clears throat> and this um, gives us two different transcriptions for on the tones tier. One is this L star, and the other is this high percent sign. Uh, and we've only talked about L star, high star, and low percent sign, high percent sign so far in the lecture, so that's all we really have to worry about. And I will say that I like the high percent sign here at the end. It's pretty obvious that the um, F0 is going consistently up towards the tail end of this utterance. Mariana made the marmalade. Why not listen to it for a fifth or a sixth time? Uh, we're going to listen to it more, though, because uh, what should we do with this L star here? Um, that is associated with this Mariana production somehow. Mariana. Mariana. And I'm really sorry that it's getting that little blip at the tail end um, because what we really want to be able to focus on is just this word by itself. Mariana. Uh, and what we want to focus on in it is 
whatever the stressed syllable is because the stressed the accent the pitch accent of a low star or a high star can only fall on a stressed syllable in Mariana so Mariana is a four syllable word Mariana right um, and actually there's two different stressed syllables in there which one of those do you think carries that low star accent it's probably going to be the one that jumps out as sort of the most prominent the loudest to you, the one that's kind of being the most stressed or the most accented. Mariana, Mariana. And in this case, you can also think of it as sort of like which syllable kind of sounds like it's dipping down the lowest in F0 because that's where the low star is going to be. Mariana, Mariana. Uh, that little echo is going to drive me nuts. But hopefully you can hear what I'm hearing, which is that we're getting that kind of dip on that Ah, that third syllable, um, the ah part of Mariana. Mariana made the marmalade. Mariana made the marmalade. Kind of, you can kind of imagine dipping your head down. Mariana made the marmalade. Um, I can't believe it. She only made jelly last year. Mariana made the marmalade. Right. Um, so that's where the pitch accent goes is on that stressed syllable. Um, and right, I'm not going to say much more about it than that, but that has to be, there's sort of like the structure that builds up from just syllable to stress to accent at the top of the, the heap, sort of. Um, and for this, it may help uh, to kind of close your eyes sometimes and just listen to it so you can kind of get a sense without reading the words or anything like that, like which one of these uh, syllables sounds like it's the most stressed or the most accented. Mariana made the marmalade. Mariana made the marmalade. And then you can also listen to the little blip at the tail end. We'll do it again, though, uh, in case you didn't get that one uh, or didn't pick up on that one the way that I was hoping you would. But we'll get lots of practice with this because it takes a little while to kind of get used to that concept. Um, so it's the same sentence but a different pitch contour on it. And this is number two. Mariana made the marmalade. Mariana made the marmalade. And uh, we see a lot of familiar structures here, uh, a lot of good stuff as well. Again, there's a little duh here at the tail end. Uh, so a little release burst for the D. And for that reason, you can shift uh, these final transcriptions over a bit to the right to incorporate that as well. But it's basically on target because we have a low percent sign there, a low intonational phrase accent or a boundary tone uh, at the tail end of this whole thing, lined up with a four at the end of the final word in the sentence, which is marmalade. 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 Uh, marmalade. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, so... Mariana made the marmalade. And I think you can hear that pretty well. Um, it starts off with a relatively high F0, which you can see in the pitch track, and then it goes down to something a lot lower here. You can actually even see a bit of creaky voice in the speaker's voice here. Marmalade. Made. 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 Marmalade. Uh, Mariana made the marmalade. Mariana made the marmalade. Something like that. Uh, right, so you get that creaky voice. It's pretty typical at the end of an utterance, um, more so than it is at the beginning, uh, at least in modern English. Uh, the other question here, the ones are fine here. That's just like what we saw on the previous example. What about this H star here? Is it on Mariana? Mariana. Is it somewhere else? Where in Mariana is it? Mariana made the marmalade. And you can kind of listen to the whole utterance. Maybe I'll turn it up a bit. Mariana made the marmalade. Mariana made the marmalade. And it goes by a little quick. Normally, you'd want to have sort of the accented syllable also be pretty long uh, because that's part of how you sort of emphasize it or give it more prominence. Uh, but it's, again, that third syllable in Mariana, that stressed syllable uh, that's bearing the pitch accent here, except in this case, it's going to be a high star. Uh, and this person um, put it kind of neatly on the peak in F0, which is occurring in the middle of that A ah vowel. <laughs> And I'm totally fine with it being right on that peak. So that looks pretty good. Sometimes we'll see in future exercises that the peak will be kind of disassociated from where the accent is, sort of counterintuitively or counter against the theory, I guess. Uh, but the theory says that the accent has to be on a stressed syllable and the accent should line up with the F0 peak, but it doesn't always happen that way. The phonetics and the phonology are a little bit disjoint um, in some cases. Uh, but otherwise, I'd say just across the board this looks like a good transcription and i'm happy to see it mariana made the marmalade even as we just get started on this topic um so we're getting the basics down which is which is nice all right let's go on to a toby labeler a toby labeler right um one thing about this one that i'll mention is um the uh, pitch settings for this particular sound file 
have been set to 75 on the low end and 500 on the high end. Um, and in, for that reason, I can see the entire blue line without any sort of discontinuities in it. Um, another sort of default set of values you often get for Prot is to go from 75 on the low end to 300 on the high end. I don't know, maybe that's changed with this new version of Prot as well. But um, a Toby labeler? If I do that, then you can see this sort of pitch having effect. As I go from the Toby to the labeler here, you can kind of hear that F0 just rise and rise and rise. A Toby labeler? So it shouldn't go down like that. At least that's not what it's actually doing acoustically, and that's not how you hear it perceptually either. Um, and if you see that sort of weird jump in F0, you might suspect that something wrong is happening with the pitch tracking. And you can just raise that high end of the pitch range to kind of fix that usually. Um, and you can see here it's a lot more continuous, a lot more... It's, it looks a lot more like how it sounds, I guess, um, when you fix the pitch range settings. A Toby labeler? That being said, we have to think about whether we're still doing the right things down here in the transcription part of this exercise. So I'm happy with the way the four lines up with the end of the labeler word here. Labeler? But remember, that should also line up with our boundary tone. So I'll squeeze that one over to the right there. Um, it's a little bit overkill. This one basically kind of ends here. Uh, I guess if I play this in prod, it's not going to, you know. A Toby labeler? Yeah, it's going to give me that stupid echo again. A Toby labeler? Yeah, but so it's hard to hear that, but you can kind of see the sound basically ends at this point. That's the end of the er. So you could push the whole thing over here a bit to the left, but uh, as the important thing is to make sure they line up because that's what sort of the grammar of the system says, that we have to have a boundary tone at the four break, and that's going to happen at the end of the word, uh, at the end of the utterance or intonational phrase. Um, otherwise, we've got uh, and we got Toby. Toby. So good job with that. Labeler. And these two are just split by one breaks. Nothing more to see there. Um, there is an issue here, though, with the way um, these accents are transcribed. So unfortunately, the special symbols that go along with the L and H are kind of reversed here. So we do have a low star here for Toby. A Toby labeler? A Toby labeler. This is kind of the characteristic pattern you get for a yes-no question. You're saying Mariana was... A Toby labeler? A Toby labeler? Amazing. She makes marmalade and labels Toby. Don't we all? Anyways, uh, the last of these is high, but it is a high boundary tone, so it's a high percent sign. And the first of these is a pitch accent, so it should have a star next to it. And this is also nicely placed right where it should be, which is on the stressed syllable of Toby, which is the first syllable of Toby. Toby? Toby? But you can hear that kind of dip down there before it rises up to that high percent sign at the end. A Toby labeler? All right. Well done. Random person number three. Okay. Lastly, we have Peach. And this one is interesting for a variety of reasons. Let's take a look at the candidate transcription. And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. Okay. So lots going on here. Uh, lots that we can kind of uh, patch up, I guess you could say. Uh, we've got the words transcribed here colors uh, with little echoes at the end of each one of them. And I think they're more or less on target. Um, the one thing we're kind of missing here is, well, multiple things are missing, but there is there should be a boundary at the tail end of walls. And since that's the last word uh, at the end of this utterance or intonational phrase, that's going to line up with a four break. Uh, the rest of these, though... Um, you can't forget that they have to line up with one breaks um, on the breaks tier because that just denotes the boundaries between words. Um, we'll say something a little more about and the uh, here. And the and the and the. Um, there's a different kind of break index you can use if sort of the end of the word isn't what it's supposed to be canonically. Like I don't know if you can actually hear an, a duh at the end of this and. And and. It's more like n n. So yeah, we'll talk about that in the next lecture. And the. Uh, more to the point here, we should probably focus on what's going on in the tones tier because it's complicated, or it's more complicated in this utterance than it was in the previous three. And the peach colors on the walls. But again, um, usually the way I do this in class is I say, why don't you listen to this, close your eyes, and try to think which one of these syllables really jumps out as being stressed, highly stressed, or most accented. And I think you can, in this case, actually pick out more than one such syllable but maybe one jumps out as more accented than all the others. And the peach colors on the walls. 
and the peach colors on the walls. Yeah, I think peach is pretty obviously accented here. Um, and in fact, it's so accented that the F0 goes above 500 hertz. So we're getting that pitch having problem again. You see this sort of jump down here. Uh, that's not sort of a nice continuous flow of F0, but we can get it to look more or less like that by raising that high end. Yeah, so this is what it should look like. Uh, a nice clear peak in peach. Peach, peach. Uh, yeah, um, and it's going down pretty dramatically there at the end, but it winds up clearly going down lower for colors after that. And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. Which is kind of the second point I wanted to make, and this person caught it, which is that colors has an accent on it too. Colors, colors. Uh, and it's a low star accent rather than a high star accent. So we go from this really high, high star to a relatively low, low star from one word to the next. And if you listen closely, you might hear what I think I hear. And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. And maybe it's there, maybe it's not, but I hear um, a high star on walls as well. Um, and it, again, this is another one of those cases, whoops, where maybe the pitch peak doesn't really line up, the F0 peak doesn't really line up with the pitch accent itself. And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. But you can kind of feel the lead into it. And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. And I'm exaggerating there that a little bit, uh, not only because I'm bad at imitating things, but also because I want to like make it jump out at you a little bit more clearly. Um, but she's emphasizing walls, not necessarily just with sort of F0, but you can also kind of lengthen it. Normally, um, words will get a bit longer or be produced more slowly when you get to the end of an intonational phrase. So that's kind of factoring into it a little bit. So, you know, it's a little bit ambiguous. If you're not sure, totally, you can always put a question mark there and say, I, maybe there's a high star there. I'm not sure. Maybe let's talk about it in class or with my fellow transcribers. Uh, I'm just going to say there's an H star there. Um, and But it's not nearly as high of an H star as we get in peach. Peach. Uh, the moral of this story for this particular utterance, though, is that we're getting more than one pitch accent happening in this entire intonational phrase. Before, we just saw one at a time. Um, what I'm not as keen on are these uh, boundary tones in the middle of the utterance. Um, especially, um, I'll point out, we have these sort of function words, these like prepositions and articles here. And the peach colors on the walls. And I'll just say um, words like and, the, on, the, like function words rather than content words are less likely to have pitch accents on them, uh, especially in a language like English. They just kind of float by because they're kind of, you know, there for the syntax more than the information that you're getting across, right? Um, so it's a lot less likely that you'll hear somebody accenting those um, in English intonation. It's possible, but probably not in the exercises that I'm going to give you. Uh, you know, you might get it in something like where somebody's trying to accent like every single word, like, and the peach colors on the walls or something like that, right? Uh, then you'd get a pitch accent on them, but then they'd also be kind of their own little intonational phrases. So I'm going to get rid of these. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what this transcriber is hearing. It's possible um, they were trying to sort of follow just the F0 track, though, which is uh, always a little dangerous. It's The F0 track is a useful guide to what's going on in the utterance. It gives you sort of a quantitative way of analyzing what you can hear, but ultimately what you hear, how you experience this utterance is gonna be a lot more indicative of what's going on phonologically in it or prosodically in it than just simply the you know numbers that get spit out of the, uh, the pitch tracker. Um, but we do have this one final determination we have to come up with, which is what kind of boundary tone do we have at the end of this utterance? And the peach colors on the walls. And the peach colors on the walls. And given our inventory so far, we either have a low percent sign or a high percent sign. What do you think? Are we going in a low F0 direction here or are we going in a high F0 direction? And the peach colors on the walls. And hopefully it's fairly clear. This one winds up at the bottom of the F0 range. It's a low percent sign. Uh, you can even see maybe a little bit of kind of creakiness here. Alls, 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 alls. Uh, rather than that nice huge rise that we got for a Toby labeler. Uh, uh, in the previous uh, example sentence. So it doesn't go all the way up. Again, though, this is another case where the pitch track might mislead you if you're paying too close attention to it. Um, creaky voice can often screw up the uh, pitch tracker. Sorry, my wife, my wife is calling here. I'm going to have to quit this in a minute. Um, but um, 
the uh, so the creaky voice can screw up the pitch tracker in a way that might make it look like there's sort of spurious F zeros happening. Um, and then in this particular case, it looks like the F zero is much higher than it actually is. You can hear um, that really low F zero. Oh. So you can expect that F zero to be down here at the low end of the range because that's normally where creaky voice uh, winds up. Oh. Um, and if you get this sort of like huge jump this huge discontinuity in F0 like this, that's a good reason to think that the pitch tracker is just basically screwing up. So don't look at this and say, oh, it's a high percent sign, because if you actually play that bit, you're probably not going to hear any sort of high F0. It's just a little uh, creak. And that's even without that stupid echo. And the peach colors on the walls. Yeah. Thank you, Echo, for making one last appearance in this video. All right. I need to call my wife back. I think you know what you need to know for this exercise, though. We'll do another one tomorrow. Hopefully uh, round number two will go just as well, if not better, than round number one. See you then.